posted June 21, 2018 15 hours 44 minutes and 20 seconds Australian fruit and vegetable farmers fear a bid by union groups to negotiate higher pay conditions for casual workers could force them out of business. The Fair Work Commission, unions and farm lobby group are currently in negotiations that will eventually see casual fruit and vegetable farm workers awarded overtime. Farmers say they won't be able to afford it and will have to leave crops in the field to rot unless supermarkets increase grocery prices. They are also worried unions are moving to organize the largely ununionized horticulture industry to offset Australia's shrinking manufacturing sector. I'm really dumbfounded. I'm wondering what we've done wrong, or have we upset the gods, Leo Skleros, a mango farmer in the Northern Territory, said, I keep checking for a note on my back saying, kick me, because I feel like we are constantly under attack, it's worse than the backpacker tax, farms will shut their doors and 2017 the Fair Work Commission clarified that casual employees under the Horticulture Award are entitled to overtime, a decision that will bring them into line with casual workers in most Australian industries. It will apply to any casual worker who works above 304 hours in an eight-week period. However, negotiations to decide exactly how much that overtime will be are ongoing between the Commission, unions and farm lobby groups. We can't afford to pay it, Mr. Scleros said. It is not viable and if this is passed we will start to see horticulture shut its doors around Australia and we will be relying on imports. You will see a lot of fruit going on the ground everywhere and a lot of farms shutting their door. Katarina Sinani, National Secretary for the National Union of workers and UW rejects assertions farmers can't afford to pay workers over time, arguing the horticulture sector has had competitive advantage for a long time, this industry pays the lowest wages, no penalty rates for casual workers, the lowest shift loadings, and we have workers in the majority employed by dodgy, labor hire, contractors who steal their wages and exploit and extort them on a daily basis, she told 7.30. In recent years Australia's horticulture sector has been rife with scandals about worker exploitation, often centered around dodgy labor hire companies companies that don't pay foreign workers properly, or house them in squalid living conditions. The revelations contributed to recent calls for Australia to implement new, modern slavery, laws to protect workers against being exploited. Ms. Inani told 7.30 the NUW is now actively trying to organize the horticulture sector, in a bid to end the industry's problem with how workers, especially foreign ones, are treated. This has been 50 years, if not longer, in the making, she said, so all we are seeing now is the result of what an industry looks like when there is no unions, when workers aren't standing up and when no one is speaking out about exploitation. We are overcoming fear by building hope, the hope that we can change workers' lives by forming a union in agriculture, growers, more than able, to manage relations with employees farmers argue that as Australia's manufacturing sector declines unions are turning to the farm sector in an attempt to shore up new members, and in particular the horticulture sector, which traditionally has had little union involvement, if they can go to their workers and say, we got you a pay rise, it's a pretty good way to attract new members, Andrew Bulmer, a salad producer in Victoria, said. The NUW denied the push into the horticulture sector is motive by a drop-off in manufacturing, it is not something that has impacted on our decision to organize it, Katarina Sinani said, the reason is we can't allow parts of the economy to be significantly exploited and turn our backs to it, otherwise we are not doing what unions are meant to do, which is to empower workers to stand up and fight for fairness, dignity and equality, James Whiteside from Industry Body at USPEG, doesn't know why the unions have taken an interest in horticulture all of a sudden, but challenged the assertion they were necessary in the horticulture sector, in our view, growers are more than able to manage the employment relations with their employees, he told 7.30, so we don't see a strong need for them to be there, worker welcomes wage hikey jazz Ari worked as a tomato picker in a greenhouse near Adelaide after immigrating from Pakistan, the money that we got was not quite enough to make a good living, he told 7.30, the nature of the job is a contradiction, we worked very hard and got very less, Mr. Ari quit his picking job and now works in a restaurant where the hours and pay are more reliable, but he said he would have stayed on the farm if his employer paid him over time. If you compare the position of the farmer and the worker, the position of the worker is worse because they are being exploited. He said, if I was given over time then I might not have left that job. Farmers should give a little more from their pocket. I think they can bear that cost as far as I'm concerned. While the unionization of the horticulture sector may be a concern to growers, Mr. Ari said it provides security to workers. If workers don't have any plans, 
platform to raise their voice and raise their concerns, they will not be better off, he said, so it is quite important for those workers, to join a union and to raise their voice. Farmers could invent, illegal behavior says farmers await the finer details of the overtime conditions. A recent decision by the Fair Work Commission to increase the minimum wage by 3.5% will add to their financial burden. Mr. Whiteside warned that fruit and vegetable farmers are already operating on tight margins due to a lack of supermarket competition in Australia, and he is doubtful the supermarkets will increase grocery prices to help farmers weather increased labour costs. Growers typically find it very hard to pass their costs on, they will obviously try to do so, and we will be talking to the supermarkets about this particular cost impost if it comes through and encouraging them to listen to growers and talk to them about the financial pressure they are under, he said. Mr. Whiteside warned if production costs increase as a result of wage hikes, it could even force farmers to break law. We support growers who do the right thing, but there will be all sorts of behaviors people invent to avoid costs, both legal and illegal I imagine, and that is the wrong economic messages to be sending, he said. It's a view farmer Leo Scleros agrees with, it would force all that illegal behavior if it is passed, I guess cash payments or swapping workers between farms, or visa swapping, and just open up a new can of worms, he said. Mr. Bulmer said another unintended consequence of wage increases is that it will encourage farmers to buy new machinery, such as robotic harvesters, to avoid having to employ expensive workers, it is one of the Big conundrums for government, people want local jobs and there's plenty of jobs available in horticulture but we are looking to cut them out of our businesses because of labor, he said. Topics, Regulation, Unions, Rural, Agricultural Crops, Farm Labor, Livestock, Australia